praise the living God. Hallelujah. I, I couldn't help but get on here this morning because I am so excited. I'm excited about what God is doing. I am full this morning. I'm on my job. I'm on my job this morning, and I'm telling you, I am so full. I'm excited. I, I hope I can even just maintain myself. Because God is so good. Oof. He is good. No matter what the situation or the circumstance that you find yourself in, just praise the Lord. Bless you, woman of God. Pastor Mo, oof. Girl, I'm on fire this morning. <laughs> I'm excited about what God is about to do in this region and for the people and the women of God here that have been in waiting. God is so good. Mm -mm -mm. I was reminded of a word this morning. I was reminded of a word of one of the ladies that went on my all page and she shared a post. And not that I was already uh, on far because I was talking to a friend of mine and she was telling me what the Lord had did for her this morning, how he kept her, but she'll tell that testimony later. But I'm telling you that God is good. He is answering our prayers. He is hearing a heart because we finally, as a people, have a heart to be heard of him. Good morning, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm full this morning. But anyway, one of the ladies that went on my page, my our page, and she shared a word. And that word that I gave back in May was because you believe the word of the Lord, it will come to pass. For I have gone before you to fulfill your destiny. Now, this is the kicker here. When we meet him or meet at the place called there, when we get to that point, to that place that he has been waiting for us, that place that the spirit of the Lord has been waiting because, see, it takes time for the mind and the body to meet where the spirit has already gone before us. But when we meet at the place called there, the place that faith saw him, the place that faith had revealed himself to us, then he will hear our heart and release the blessings that he has in store for us. It's only up to us. All we have to do is decide, hey, this is where God is leading me to. All he, we have to do is obey him. All we have to do is deny ourselves and say, Lord, I'm coming after you. I'm running after you like a deer that panteth after water, Lord. I long to be in that place. I long to be in your space. I long to be in the atmosphere, Lord, of where you are, where you reside, where you will overshadow me. Because even though he's with us at all times, there is a specific place and there is a time that we can meet him. If faith is able to see it, hallelujah, this body, this soul and this mind will come together. It will come all the way together and we'll find ourselves in the place that God wants us to be. But all he wants us to do is don't look at the scene of things. Don't look at what you see. Don't react to the world and the way the world is moving because, hallelujah, we are in the atmosphere hanging in the balance and he is holding us. He's holding us. He's undergirding us. He is supporting us. He is strengthening us. And the place called there, uh, when you get there and you see and you know that it is him that has pulled you in this specific spot, let nothing keep you from moving forward in the things of God. Not man, not child, not the world. Because he said that if you love anybody more than you love me, <laughs> I'm telling you, it ain't even worth it. You have purpose. Good morning, my sister. You have purpose. You have destiny. You have a call. There's something on the inside of you that is yearning to come alive, that is yearning to pull you forward out of the same old way of thinking and out of situations that you've got yourself in because you've been stuck into a cycle. I'm here to tell you that 
It is your time and it is your season. But the thing about it, it is up to you to make the decision whether or not you're going to move forward and that you won't be swayed. The Lord has been dealing with me with the book of Ezekiel. And he said to Ezekiel, he said, you eat this scroll. Eat it all up. Eat every bit of what I give you. He said, you eat it. Now I'm going to paraphrase and say, digest it. Let it become a part of you. You, you partake of what he's giving you. Eat it up. He said, and then after you have eat it, ate it up, then he said, you go and you tell my people. He said, I will set your face like flint. Don't look at their faces. Don't look at the attitudes, the dispositions. Don't look at what other people are doing. He said, but the word that I put in your mouth, you say only that which what I've given you. Not only that, but he said, you know, everybody's fasting uh, TV. They are fast uh, uh, food. They were fast uh, uh, all these other little things. They're, they're fast by just doing fruit. But he said, you, my sister, you fast words. Because see, sometimes you say things that you shouldn't say because you're saying them out of your emotion. You're saying them out of your feelings. You're saying them out of your thought life and not the mind of Christ. So he said, you fast your words. See, you tell these certain people the same thing because sometimes the things that we say, we pull on other people's emotions and it causes them to to co-sign with what we're saying, and they have no earthly idea, the motive, nor the intent of what we're saying. We could be bashing somebody else. We could be uh, causing somebody else to get hurt. We could be causing somebody else to be stumbled by, with the words that we're saying out of our mouth because we don't even say what God would have us to say. We're saying the things that pop off in our own mind, thinking that it's some type of, uh, it gives makes us look some type of way or it causes us. Oh God, to get some type of uh, reaction out of the people. But I'm telling you, we will be accountable for every word that we say in this earth. And God will cause us to reap what we have sown. Because what you put out there, believe me, it's going to come back. So understand that whatever God gives you to do, do just that. You play a significant part in the kingdom of God. Your part is to upbuild the kingdom and not to tear it down. Now, I'm not saying that we don't get warning and warnings don't come before destruction. But the thing about it is you let God be the one that is going to expose somebody else. Your business is to uplift and build up your brother and sister and love them. Hallelujah. Not saying that I've never done that myself because I, I'm just as guilty as anybody else. But now is the time to walk by faith. Faith and not by sight. Walk by faith and not by your emotions. Walk by faith and not what you've been doing on a constant basis. It's time that you're going to choose God and you're going to walk after the Spirit or you're going to stay in that same state, same mindset, same way of doing things. People might not like who you are, but what they don't understand, my God, is that they are not rejecting you. They are rejecting Christ. Because God gives everyone liberty to what he wants to give them. So it ain't even about you. It's about what God would have you to do. So people better get out of their self and quit trying to compete with everybody else. Nullifying the same God and the same spirit that's in somebody else. Because if he's working in your life, you better know he's working in mine and hers and his and theirs. Because they're in pursuit of Christ. They're not in pursuit of man. They are in pursuit of Christ. So we best better be careful of the things that we are doing. It is time for us to step up to the plate, study to show ourselves approved, a welcome that needeth not be ashamed, for we are the workmanship of Jesus Christ. So if you got a desire to serve and seek him, you better understand what that desire is and who it is for, because it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with your brother and your sister. But what God has put in you, it is for somebody else. That's all I got to say. Be in pursuit. 
of Jesus Christ. Step out on faith and cause God. You better go somewhere that you are being fed and that you are being encouraged and that people see and know what you're working with so they can cultivate the gifting that is on the inside of you. God leads us to where he wants us to go. It is up to us to stay and to get up under somebody to be able to submit because that is your trial and that is your testing time to see whether or not you're going to do what you say you're going to do. It is up to you. You have to make the decision. Nobody else can make it for you. It is you that is going to stand before Christ. You came in this world by yourself and you're going to go out of here by yourself. So it is up to you to work out your own soul salvation. Quit looking to the left and the right. Quit worrying about what people say to you. Quit worrying about somebody else because you're going to miss it and you're not going to be prepared. You're going to either be the version that has enough oil or the version that's going to be begging for oil. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm in my place and I'm going to stay in my place. So the, the word again today is this. That word again today is this, because you have believed the word of the Lord, it will come to pass. For I have gone before you to fulfill your destiny. When we meet at the place called there, when you can meet him at the place called there, that place that faith saw me, says the Lord, I will hear your heart and release the blessings I have in store for you. It is up to you to run after God like a deer panteth after water. Because nobody else, nobody else can take your place and nobody else can do what God will have you to do. The body is fitly joined together, supplying one to another with the things that we have need of him for such a time as this. I also want to tell you about an event I'm having and it's called the birthing room. The birthing room. It is time for us to birth out what God has called and instilled and put in us for us to do. Not to be afraid. You cannot be afraid. You cannot operate off of fear and trust God at the same time. You're going to have to choose who you're going to serve and you're going to have to make a decision to go 100%. Ain't no shucking and jiving. You've been shucking and jabbing all your life. So it's time for you to make a decision to do what God will have you to do. It is called the birthing room. It is October the 7th. It's going to be at 10 o'clock a.m. It's going to be an all-day event. Come, get what you need, leave. If you got to, if you want to stay, hey, stay. Because we are looking to have a wonderful time in the Lord. I have a Powerful speaker coming from Winchester, Virginia, Apostle Teresa Sharp. And I'm telling you, this woman is a true woman of God. She is a true prophet of God. She is an apostle. And she has been ordained for such a time as this to birth, to birth, to cause a birthing to take place. Come on out and see us and visit with us. That's October the 7th, Saturday, October the 7th at 10 o'clock in the morning. At the Hilton Garden Inn, Louisville Northeast. That's at 9850 Park Plaza Avenue, Louisville, Kentucky, 40241. Any information, inbox me. You can text me, 812-989-6483. Come and get what's due. You, in Jesus' name I pray. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Because you know what? I am. I'm full, and I plan to stay full all day long. In Jesus' name, I love you guys. God bless you. Bye-bye.